Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ready, Set, Live podcast. I am your host, Captain Rex Whitcamp. I am so honored uh, to have my next guest here with us today. Captain Dave Valero is a retired firefighter from the El Paso Fire Department. He spent 21 years in an illustrious career there and now has a nonprofit called Firepower 40, which is instilling the tenets and values for uh, behavioral growth in at-risk youth in the El Paso area. It's a, such a worthy cause, and I'm honored to actually be a part of his program with another mutual friend of ours. Uh, today, I'd like to have Dave on the show today and, and pour into our lives, and I wanted to say thank you. Real quick, be sure to follow our channel, to like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications, and we're going to be sending out some information for you uh, moving forward. So without further ado, I'd like to turn over the floor, and, and Dave, just... Uh, Tell us who you are and, and what you're about and, and what, you're, what you're doing right now with your life. Um, thank you. Hi, Rex. Uh, appreciate you uh, inviting me out. I'm really excited to, to connect with you. I haven't seen you in a while. So I am uh, Dave, as you said, uh, Valero from El Paso, Texas. I, um, yeah, I, I grew up in a very humble home, so I, humble beginnings, uh, south side of El Paso, Texas, as I like to say. And, um, you know, that's where I, uh, I learned a lot from my parents, you know, we didn't have a whole lot, but I did learn, uh, to, to value, uh, what we have. My mom was kind of a, a chronic cleaner and she took care of our home very well. I always had food on the table and my dad was a hard worker. He, uh, worked in a factory here locally and, um, you know, he was loyal. He was loyal to his, uh, employer. He missed only three days uh, in 33 years of work there. And uh, so very humble be beginnings, things for which I am very grateful. And uh, just here, started out here. I started a fire service. I had gone away to play some college basketball, uh, <laughs> something that was biologically challenging. I, I fell in love with, and I went and played a little college basketball in East Texas and then returned in my mid-20s to start the fire service. In my, uh, here in El Paso, Texas. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I'd like to jump in and just give the subject matter of uh, our talk today. And I have come up with what I like to call a, a subject area called the five tenets. I'm so excited to have you on as a guest to talk about these tenets. And a tenet, the definition is something that is a, a standard that holds true uh, for an organization and uh, a core belief, if you will. And I think this is going to have massive effect on people's lives. And it's uh, part of the reason I wanted to have this podcast and this, this video to be able to have guests pour their insight uh, from different industries. And, and obviously, your input is, is very valuable as a uh, former fire service and, uh, and professional in the arena um, of the fire industry, because professionalism is synonymous with rising above mediocrity. And uh, the industry is synonymous with uh, elevating your standards. And so to go through the rest of our tenants, we have visualizing the best versions of ourselves, which is a, always a, a self-start challenge in the fire service is to, to get, always get better and always be training and learning new skills and honing, honing the skills that we have. Uh, also to live up to our highest potential. And then from there, once we realize a true potential, we go ahead and give purpose and direction for that potential. So in a nutshell, those are the five tenants and the speaking topics on today. And I'd like to get your opinion. So when we talk about rising above mediocrity, why is that so important, uh, the, especially these days? We're talking about all of this in the context of where we are now uh, in the world. Why is it important right now, the times that we're living in, to rise above mediocrity? Uh, that's a great question. I think it's in our DNA, Rex. Um, we have uh, fingerprints of greatness uh, within us. We were created for great things and the image of, of, uh, of greatness. And it's just a, a calling, just a, a true north, if you will, to always do things with excellence, whatever it is, you know, whether it's, a, uh, you know, sweeping the floor at, at, at the workplace or, or being on top of the food chain, um, you know, doing things in an excellent way is something that, um, you know, for all of us, at the end of the day, we, we go to sleep and, and we're happy. You know, I think that's something that we all want to be. And it's, it's something that we can look back on at the end of, of our life, too, not just at the end of our day. Something that I know very, 
very well, very intimately is the final moments of people's lives. And, um, you know, I was there. I, I saw people that didn't reach their potential, that didn't strive for excellence, and, uh, and they died with regret, you know. So uh, I think that untapped potential, the things that are left undone, it's just something that doesn't sit well with us at the end of the day, at the end of our life. So absolutely, just moving beyond the mediocrity is something that is embedded. It is in our soul. It's something that we all want to do. Uh, absolutely. And, and such a great response and great answer, Dave. And thank you for that. I, I do see behind you, you have the fire helmets there. And that kind of reminds me that as humans and, and something when you were talking about our DNA, we're not just one. We don't wear just one hat anymore. We're fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and uncles. We are leaders in the community. We may be servants at work or we may be volunteers in some capacity or a children's coach or um, you know, we have different callings, different leadership roles that we take on in our lives. And uh, what's important to find and, and understand is that there is a level of mediocrity in all arenas of our lives. And once we start to understand that it's possible to raise above that, we start having a bigger view and a bigger picture of our purpose in our lives. So that's, uh, that's great. And, and I'm sure that your answers have fed into somebody already. So I want to interject a quick quote here from George Patton, the general. Anyone in any walk of life who is content with mediocrity is being untrue to himself. And that's so true. And it, it is exactly what you said. It just it rubs against our natural DNA. And, and once people can serve their purpose according to who they are already, it just feels more natural. So I'd like to move into our next uh, tenet, and that's elevating our standards. Uh, it's been said that if we want to make a change it, it, to do it, it, the first thing we have to do is elevate our standards. And I want you to speak towards that. What can you tell us? Well, I've, I've had the privilege, you know, I've been blessed to be around, um, to be in a, an environment with firefighters. You know, I competed uh, some of this, uh, some of these firefighter helmets are from a competition, the firefighter combat challenge. It's, uh, it's actually been hailed by ESPN as the toughest two minutes in sports. It has that uh, feel around it when you're on the course that you're doing something just a little bit above average. And those are the people with whom I have been around or, or just running around on that course. People from 16 different countries, firefighters who, who raise their bar, you know, they, they really uh, did that. They, ra they raised their right hands at the, at the beginning of their service. They uttered an oath and uh, these men and women, they meant it, you know? So for me, I've just, it's been, it's been a blessing to be around them because I see that they're, Honestly, I've just seen that there are no excuses. There's so many stories out there in the firefighter combat challenge, guys who uh, you know, have overcome cancer, who have um, you know, lost people in their lives, who have lost their homes in a fire. I've uh, got a great guy in, uh, that, that has just, you know, great people that have shown me examples of resiliency. And um, so... So, and it makes me raise the bar, you know, one, I'd have no excuses. I look at my life and, and, uh, you know, I've been really blessed. I haven't had the tragedy that a lot of these men and women, uh, have had. And they, they raise my level of performance and raise my level of thinking. And, uh, so for me, it's been really easy. I uh, always try to gather around people and, you know, it's been tough, you know, even this COVID, the COVID challenges here, uh, recently you know, have been challenging for me, you know, I'm not working like I, like I normally do in, in the, in the schools where I usually do leadership training. So it's made me just focus on, on positive things. Um, uh, I, I engage and have conversations with people like that, that I know have that mindset. So just gathering around people right now is, is really important for me that have that mindset um, because, you know, you never know. <laughs> Even somebody that uh, is as positive as I think I am, uh, you know, it's always good to to be around people that that uh, that that have just mastered those areas of their life. And and balance balance points in our life are, are tough. You know, there's so many things that are always coming at us. Um, 
you know, some people are mastering other areas spiritually, financially. So I just try to talk to a lot of people and fill myself, uh, surround myself by people like you, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I wasn't waiting on that. <laughs> but, you know, that's like Jim Rome says, it's OQP, the, the principle of OQP, which is surrounding yourself with only quality people. And if you want to get on in the next level of, of your life, you have to reach for people that are on that level and strive to be on their level. And it's like Dr. Dennis Kimbrough said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group, right? So it just, it's, it's perfect, you know, and, and sometimes when we look at the frustrations of the, of the situations in our lives, it, it should be not so much frustrating, but it should be an acknowledgement, almost rejoice in the fact that when people are frustrated, they're achieving that next level already because they've already become unsettled and they're willing to make a change. They should be willing to make a change if it's frustrating enough. It's time to move to the next level and then find people uh, because we can't run this race on our own, especially in these times. We have to reach out for leadership and for the right uh, quality people to give us advice and give us support and, and surround ourselves with supportive, collaborative relationships that have our best interest in mind. And so that's a great analogy on, uh, on how to elevate our standards and, and why that's necessary, especially today, because, you know, as I know, things have changed and this is a different uh, landscape for everybody so um you know we couldn't imagine where we are now even a few months or six months or a year ago so you know it's kind of important to talk about what we could imagine and that leads us right into our next point which is how how can we visualize the best the absolute best versions of ourselves why is that important to people you know, that's tricky visualizing. Uh, you know, I, I do believe that everything does begin with a vision, everything great in life. Uh, you know, those without vision perish. Uh, but it's kind of tricky right now with social media so available to us. Uh, you know, we're living in this information society and there's so much negativity out there and even the positivity, you know, sometimes it's so challenging not to compare ourselves to other people you know visualizing what their greatness is and it's always looking so good right on social media you've got that pretty picture and uh, you know it just might not be that pretty for you within your four walls within your environment so you know i have heard that you know i've been studying a lot on uh, you know the clinical psychology and the researchers that are that are saying what is really going to be causing uh, emotional damage for, for, you know, emotional shrapnel for years to come. And a lot of it does come down to, and even before this COVID uh, quarantine, uh, COVID virus challenge, um, you know, I was reading and, and believing and, and agreeing with the fact that um, when we compare ourselves to other people, when we visualize our life through other people, uh, on social media, for example, or even people, you know, great people, great speakers, you know, I'd love to, I envision myself being a great speaker someday out there, but, you know, people who have already reached that at an earlier time, it's very challenging uh, and tricky, you know, there's a trap there, you got to be careful not to be comparing yourself to other people, because what the researchers are saying is that's one of the quickest ways to cause depression in your life is to compare yourself to other people. So staying in your lane is very important, visualizing what your gifts are or what, based on what your gifts are, where you can go, and just taking it a step at a time. You know, right now, I think it's important for people to know that, you know, uh, you know we've been, we've been uh, there's a detour here, you know, and we might have been on a, on a roll or some momentum. I know I was, but uh, it's really important to know that, um, you know, greatness and uh, the things that you're visualizing there might be a tactical pause that's necessary like we take on the fire ground when they're in there and the things are coming down on us just take a tactical pause pull back and now here re-engaging just understand that sometimes greatness and visualizing that first step of greatness could be something different than it was even six months ago before this uh, quarantine it could just be um you know, getting out of your bed and singing or, or you know, running around the neighborhood with your dog. Uh, just the fact that you're overcoming uh, that step for the day. Um, I don't know if that's making sense, but, you know, you might have to just reevaluate where you are and where we all are in the world. 
and uh, understand that uh, for me, I just always believe that, that, that God restores, you know, he's a restorer and he doesn't restore things like a, like a classic car. You know, I heard my pastor once uh, say that he restores things to better than the original. I think that's really important right now, visualizing, not losing the grand vision of where I want to be, but also just going back, taking that tactical pause and understanding that after this quarantine, it is possible for God to restore in my life things to better than they were before. So uh, visualizing is so important. Keep your eye on the vision. But you know what? Uh, a tactical pause might, be, might mean, hey, man, we might have to break this down a little bit quicker, a little bit smaller here, smaller steps. I heard another great man, um, Chad Hymas, who is a motivational speaker. He's a quadriplegic, and he wrote a book, uh, One Strike at a Time. You know, he was, he was taking this long journey, 500-mile uh, uh, journey to Vegas, uh, I believe from Lake Tahoe or somewhere nearby. Oh, not so nearby, but he was doing this in his wheelchair. And he was visualizing wow. just a little too far. It was the mile markers that he was counting. And, and it was too far a goal. And he was going to quit halfway down. And then his wife reminded him uh, or encouraged him to focus on a smaller goal, like to focus on the stripes on the road. And he ended up making it through. But it really resonated with me. Wow. It really stuck with me. And I think right now it's really important because I had some big goals and I had some great momentum in the schools, but I had to restructure. I had to take that tactical pause. And greatness for me right now is doing exactly what we're doing right now, Rex. And I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you you don't know how much it's meant to me for to even do this and talk about it. So thank you very much. Oh, no problem. And I'm sure that that answer has resonated with with many people. Uh, and you know, those of us that can dream and those of us that have yet to learn how to dream, in the end, it, it's whether or not it becomes a manageable goal. And you can do all the visualizations, but that, that thing you said where a tactical pause might be necessary, that's like a reset button to people's um, visualization process because you could dream a grander dream. And, and I've heard it even explained uh, even further that if your dream isn't big enough to scare you, you need it, you're not dreaming big enough. Uh, but especially in light of where we are now, a tactical pause might be necessary to find a support channel that is going to enter the room and, and show you, listen, this is where you are. This is how you can get to where you need to be. And that's why we're talking. So, you know, I've heard it uh, said also that losers will visualize the penalties of failure. But when winners visualize the rewards of their success, they achieve it. And it holds true, especially in this day and age. So, so thank you for that. H highly valuable content. Thanks, uh, Captain Dave. <laughs> um, I want to move to the next uh, to the next item here, uh, the next pennant, and we're moving in and talking about a thing that is living up to a person's highest potential, not just a potential, but for a person to live up to their highest potential. Why is that necessary? Why can't people just say, ah, I don't just want to. I only want to use some of my talents or I only want to sing a little bit because I can sing, not, not me personally, <laughs> don't hear me sing, but why, why is it important for people to live up to that potential at the highest level? Yeah, another great question. And, you know, I did mention the personal side of that, that there's something within us, you know, that DNA that, that just won't let us sleep quite right when we haven't done the best that we possibly can. But I also want to mention, or I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, I'm a dad, I'm a father of two girls. And for me, everything is seed planting. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm leaving a legacy, man. And I heard, it, I heard another great quote, uh, you know, legacy isn't what you leave behind two people. It's what you leave inside of them. So when I think of my daughters, you know, and that legacy, uh, honestly, everything I do now in my life is so much different than it was uh, in my early 20s. Um, you know, I'm thinking legacy now. I'm about to be a grandfather. My uh, daughter, Sam, is, is about to have her first child. Uh, so legacy is so important for me and seed planting. Everything I think about, everything I do is all gonna be duplicatable. You know, that harvest that I want 
in my children, in my grandchildren, it's all seed planting, you know, and do I want some great things for them? Absolutely. Well, guess what? I'm the farmer, man. I got to plant greatness in everything I do. And what does that mean? That means every day when I'm walking around this city of El Paso, I bump into somebody and I'm challenged. So I think grace is so important. That's what helps me sleep at night. When I can overcome challenges in my life, somebody cutting me off on the road, you know, and uh, I just, I'm always, I'm always, I'm 24 seven. I'm thinking about the seed I'm planting. What kind of seed am I going to plant here? Because it's going to sprout up in my daughters, in my, in my grandchildren, that seed of hate, that seed of anger, that seed of pride, that seed of strife, whatever it is, man, I want my daughter, I want my grandkids to go to sleep happy at night. I want them to know that they've done something great in their life. Well, uh, it's all seed planning for me, man. Yeah, there's no way around it. So there's, uh, there's accountability there. There's a sage type mentality, a sage type living, where I just want to be that wisdom planter, that, uh, that, that scripture, that Bible, that, uh, that living example um, of, of good of just good, of love. Of and, I, and I'm sure that resonates with your daughters and they see that, they see the, the fruition of, of those seeds um, back to them when they, when they experience uh, a, a, such a great man and father that you are to them, then that in turn allows them to, to further their growth with that seed. They take that seed and start growing it. And uh, that, that's highly relevant to, to what people in the message we're trying to get across is people have these seeds in them. They have the seeds of greatness and it's either fear or it's faith. And that's what they're feeding and whichever one they feed, that's the one that will grow. So your, your daughters are very well served by such a role model, such as yourself. And I want to insert a quote by Winston Churchill here and because it takes work. It's not easy being, being the, the, the mentor, the seed, the positive guy, the, the, um, the guy that's always doing things, trying to do things right for other people. Continuous effort, not strength or intelligence, is the key to unlocking our potential. And that was said by Winston Churchill, who obviously understood the value of potential. And uh, Henry Ford has another uh, a quote here, and that's that there is no man living who, is, who isn't capable of doing more than he thinks he can do. And we all can do more. And if we admit that to ourselves and live that life by design, it should it should come as the very next step in our process. So thank you for that answer. Um, the, the last tenant here, we're, we're going to close in just a minute, but I wanted to get to this. And that's basically once people find out they have a, a potential and, and they're living up to it, what do they do with it? Why is it important to harness and focus that energy and give a real purpose for their potential or passion, which is another word for people's potential? Why is that important? Oh gosh, that's so many. Shoot, I'm thinking of a bunch of quotes here myself. Um, uh, you know, if somebody hasn't found something, I think it was MLK, Martin Luther King, who said, uh, you know, if, if you haven't found something worth dying for, um, you know, you're not fit to live. Uh, purpose, passion, you know, the Greeks don't, don't have obituaries. I love that. I read that somewhere. They, they just ask one question. Um, did he have passion? Um, that is one of those legacy things, you know, that I want to leave behind, living that example of somebody who has found their purpose. And I am blessed to have found my purpose through some struggle in my life, uh, you know, a few years back. Uh, and, and it all kind of happened just, it was, uh, you know, it was with that obstacle course. Uh, you know, I'll just share the quick story here, the quick version of it. But, uh, you know, as an obstacle course, uh, you know, the firefighter combat challenge, um, you know, I created the first team in El Paso and we've competed with firefighters, as I mentioned, around the world. But we started doing something different with that here locally. Um, my right hand man, I like to say, and I, uh, Kip Hall, we used to go into schools and help at risk youth, you know, negotiate their way through their challenges in their life with this obstacle course. Well, we had become one of the best teams in the world and um, uh, for about almost 10 years. And he was one of the reasons for it. But in 07, uh, we, we met through with a big tragedy in our life, uh, all of us. Uh, Kip 
calls us from the hospital. It was the first competition of the year. Turns out they found a baseball-sized tumor in the back of his head. And um, he wasn't able to make that competition. He had to undergo brain surgery and 60 days of chemo and radiation. And then he goes out and competes with us in Tyler, Texas, uh, in this grueling obstacle course that uh, recognizes the toughest two minutes in sports. And then um, 30 days after that day, he was overdosed. And uh, three weeks later, he was gone. You know, we lost a, a great servant here in our community. And I lost a, a really, really good friend. So uh, it was in that time of struggle that, um, you know, one of the most unusual places, I, I guess, at my life at that, that time to find my purpose. Um, there were some kids that were visiting the fire academy out there. I was the captain out there. And they were visiting out there with a counselor from the middle school. And um, I, I went out there. Uh, I was ready to go home. And I was feeling sorry for myself that day. Uh, but I guess God had different plans. He had these 12 boys there with uh, a counselor, a school counselor. And um, so I went out there and toured them around uh, like Kip and I always did. I, I was setting up the obstacle course. I was, I was making my way up the tower that is now recognized as the Kip Hall Memorial Tower. And um, this is two weeks after the funeral, right? And uh, I find myself plastered against the wall inside there. I can't move. I'm overwhelmed with emotion. and. Uh, you know, there's just something kind of like, you know, you're a firefighter, Rex. You, felt that you have felt that hand before when you're fighting a very hot fire. It's the guy with more experience and you're just getting started. You know, you feel that tug, right? He's pushing you back into the fire. Well, I felt it in that tower. I felt this, this hand on my back just keep going. And this voice inside just saying, keep going, don't quit. All the while just missing Kip. Well, it was in those moments that I did find my purpose. I'm blessed to have attached myself to purpose and uh, something great, greater than me. And I had an opportunity there to share the story of Kip and what he found inside of us, uh, which is uh, a purpose in life. And it has been my driving force. It has been um, that catalyst. It's been the the, the force multiplier that, that all happened within that storm. So uh, for anybody out there who's, who's going through it, and I know we're going through some tough stuff right now and we're being challenged, uh, man, if we could just stay there like we were taught as firefighters to stay in the room and stay in the fight, there's just nothing like waking up every morning, like you said, with some purpose, you know, a purpose-driven life. Uh, it just brings me so much joy, uh, even through the challenges, through the failures and stuff. I just know I have that vision. I know I have that purpose and I know I'm on the right track. And even if it's one person that I'm talking to in a school or somebody in a, in a Walgreens or in a, in a convenience store that I'm able to share a short story or just some, some love, some grace when, they're, when they're, the opportunity is there to be offended. Um, that's all what this is about. I think purpose, we all have it. And once we're attached to it, I think we just become, we find that true north, you know, I just feel like we're, we're just walking around and you can tell, man, that we're on fire for life and it just, it resonates and it's just so contagious. So there's a message to the world, man, with like, find your passion, find your purpose yeah. and you will be a more joyful person. That's an amazing, amazing story, and uh, I, I'm going to post links uh, either up above or down below in the comments of this video eventually to have, um, it, I've seen the video, it's, in the, it's an amazing video about Kip Hall's last uh, memorial challenge. Um, I personally know the story, and I, and I love it, and I'm gripped every time. Um, it really is a testament to why it's important to find some your potential and pursue your passion. Um, and, and about the Greeks not having um, uh, obituaries, they just they didn't want to know one thing. Did he have passion? And I want to urge your audience, urge the audience and anybody that's listening today, I want to ask and I want to close with that question. Do you have passion? And answer honestly, because we all do. And whether or not you admit it or whether or not you uh, are hiding it, uh, it's going to serve you well. And it's not just about the person who has or fulfills their passion. The world deserves uh, Firepower 40. The world deserves uh, programs that are encompassing the, the purpose of people's lives to bring out the better good for us all. And, and it's been said 
that we should be ashamed to die unless we have some further advancement in, in, human, uh, in, in the human experience, um, Horace Mann. And we all hold the key to our own potential. And the real tragedy of life is that what dies inside of a man while he still lives. So, you know, I, I, I often talk about people think and they, they, they live and they walk around living as if they have a thousand years to live. We only have so much time. And that's why I believe that you could agree, Dave, that it's so important to fulfill our potential and it aligns with our passion and it's because of our purpose in life. So um, great interview, David. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to sign off here. Went a little over uh, the time, but uh, I want to appreciate our listeners who stuck around and listened until the end. Uh, and I urge them to, to find and fulfill what it is on their purpose. So reach out to any of the social media channels. I'm going to put more links in the description below and above. Uh, to Dave, Dave Valera's cause there. And uh, we'd love to hear from you and, and share in your passions as well. So thank you for your time, Dave. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Rex. Yes, sir. Take care.